It is good to be here. Open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs of 14th chapter. You know, as we read the Bible, we understand that God teaches us how He wants us to live, what He wants us to do. He tells us what not to do. But he's very clear on what He wants. What, and what He wants is always best. Stand with me as we read Proverbs chapter 14. Just one verse in here this morning. Verse 12. <clears throat> there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is a way of death. Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings you've given. Lord, as we come before you today, we realize that those things that we think, the ways that we want to do things, the actions we want to take, are not always right. But what you want, Lord, what you tell us, what you teach us, that's always the right way, the best way, the good way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Satan and his vast army of demons are continuously trying to convince people to believe that what God says is good is actually things that we should not be involved in. He tries to make us to believe that what God teaches us to follow is really sin. Satan has also convinced us that our so-called politically correct society, that God doesn't know what he's talking about, that God... looks up on us in such a way that, hey, all we need to understand, you know, he's just the, an old-fashioned fuddy-duddy off up in the wild blue yonder. That Satan's ways are right, that our ways of thinking are good, that whatever we feel like doing, that, you know, if it brings us pleasure, go ahead and do it. It's all right. But Satan and his army of demons are definitely fighting hard to make us understand that God's out of touch with the reality. God's never out of touch with the reality. God is so good. God is so wonderful. God is so marvelous. You know, American society has been completely convinced by, society, by Satan and his army of demons that anything that brings pleasure is good, regardless of what the Bible has to say. You know, we talk about Satan, we joke about Satan, we laugh about Satan. We think he's a big joke. But Satan is alive. Satan is fighting hard to destroy individuals, to destroy families, to destroy societies, to destroy nations. Satan is alive and he's fighting hard today. You turn on a television radio, look at a newspaper, all types of sin we can see. And it gets worse every day. We can understand as we see those things, Satan and his army of demons are fighting hard. You know, Satan has convinced our society that we're all going to the same place. We're just taking different ways to get there. God tells us there's one way. That's by faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There's no other way to escape hell. No other way to get to heaven. You know, it's commonly believed that if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, well, you're doing okay. Well, if that were correct, which it's not, uh, who'd be the judge of good deeds and bad deeds? And we'd never know where we stood. But God shows us a way that we can know where how we stand. By placing our faith and trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then we know we're on our way to heaven. Then we can know without a doubt we're safe from hell. Then we can know without a doubt that when we leave this life, we're going to spend eternity with God in heaven. You know, people don't go to hell because... Their bad deeds outweigh their good deeds. 
people go to hell because they choose to reject Jesus Christ instead of believing on Him as Lord and Savior. You know, Satan has convinced our society that any religion other than Christianity is good. That Christianity is a religion of hatred and prejudice. But on the other hand, Christianity is the only way to get to heaven. The only way to escape hell. Praise God that He offers to us a clear path to heaven by grace through faith in Jesus. Satan and his army of demons have convinced American society of many lies, just a couple of them, that being controlled by alcohol and drugs is good, even though it affects families. It destroys individuals. It destroys households. It destroys uh, the workplace. It increases crime. And we can continue naming what it does. The second thing that he lies about is that having sexual relationships with anyone you want to, you're not married to, regardless of sex, is good. Satan works hard to bring destruction into individuals' lives, into families, into churches. The sad part about it is he's doing a good job of it. People are responding to him. We as a church need to pay attention to the words of God. There's a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of life. God didn't just say that once. Look over to Proverbs 16, verse 25. Again, he says the same thing. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is a way to death. God emphasized it. He said it twice. Recorded it twice in His Word. That emphasizes it very strong. That our ways are not good. The ways that we so often choose lead to death, to destruction. What Satan tells us leads to death and destruction. But it's God's ways that lead to hope. God's ways that give us peace. God's ways that give us encouragement. God's ways that lead us to heaven. Praise God that His way is the right way and any other way is wrong. Any other way is sin. You know, American society is a national disgrace today. We look around and see what's going on. You know, I don't have to give you a list of sins for you to know that. We live in rebellion against God so much today. You know, our nation is now the most violent of all the industrialized nations. The United States homicide rate for 15 to 24 year olds is seven times higher than Canada's. Teenage abortion and drug use is the highest in the world. In a survey of 2,000 students in grades 6 to 9, two out of three boys and half of the girls thought it acceptable for a man to force a woman to have sex if they'd been in debt been dating for six months. In his book, The Man of Character is a, is a World of Compromise, Richard Huxley tells us this. He said, Criminologist James Q. Wilson searched American history to find out where we've gone wrong. He found a fact he hadn't noticed before. The decrease in crime in the 19th century followed a widespread Christian revival known as the Second Great Awakening. That's what makes a difference in our lives, a revival. Christian revival that changes our hearts, changes our attitudes, changes directions. He says, 
repentance and renewal spread across this country after that, bringing moral reform. And American society came to respect the values of sobriety, hard work, and self-restraint. Also in that book, he said, Chuck Colson stated, the lesson of history is clear. When Christian belief is strong, the crime rate falls. And when Christian belief weakens, the crime rate increases. Psalm chapter 14, verse 34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Sin is a disgrace. Our nation is living in great disgrace. John Adams said, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. Historians Will and Ariel Durant said, There is no significant example in history of a society successfully maintaining moral life without the aid of Christianity. Jesus Christ must be in charge, must be in control, must be in our lives making changes if we're to have a moral society. When we decide to let our society be controlled by us as individuals, taking Satan's ideas, that's when destruction comes about. And we can see the destruction in our own nation. We can see the destruction in our families. We can just see, see the destruction in our school systems, in our communities. God has a better life for us than what we're willing to accept. When we place our faith and trust in God and we follow Him and obey Him and serve Him, good things begin to happen. We need that Christian revival. Alexis de Tocqueville of France came to the United States of America to see why it was so great. And he searched throughout the United States. Jobs, in the workplace, the school systems, and different places. But it wasn't until he went into the churches of America and heard the pulpits aflame with righteousness. He said, then I understood her greatness. Christianity, he said, is indispensable to the maintenance of Republican institution. Christianity is so essential to the attitude of people. It's essential to the growth of morality within a nation. Christianity growing immorality is put behind. With Christians, Christianity growing, there's great repentance of sin and obedience to the Lord. You see, Christianity comes as we repent of our sin, believing on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. By grace, we're saved through faith. That's a wonderful gift from the Lord God. You know, when Jesus Christ first started His ministry, what did He do? He said to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When John the Baptist started his ministry, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That message has not changed. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus Christ is still alive. He's still real. He's still here with us. He calls us to repentance. He calls us to obey Him, to serve Him, to love Him, to let Him change our lives, to change our attitudes. That we would obey Him, that we would serve Him, that we would love Him, that we would let Him take complete control of our lives. I wonder this morning, have you read the Bible completely through? Uh, you know, I, I did, you know, I suppose in any church you go into, 
There are Christians who are suffering from, from spiritual malnutrition because they've never read the Bible completely through. I urge you and encourage you to read the Bible over and over and over and over again and again and again and again as long as you live. That's an important part of our lives. Very important part for us uh, of the way that we are to live. You know, you want to know how often you should read the Bible? Just every day you eat. Feed yourself spiritually every day that you feed yourself physically. You know, last summer my mom passed away. She would have been 104. She'd have lived two more months and still lived at home. But she was blind in one eye and could could barely see out of the other and she couldn't t recognize a person. Uh, but several times a day she'd read her Bible. You know, she still some way, I, I don't know how she did it, but some way she could still do that. Reading the Word of God is essential. If you think it's important to feed yourself physically, it's just as important to feed yourself spiritually. That's a problem we have today. So many Christians don't pick up a Bible between Sundays. So many Christians have never read the Bible completely through. You don't know the directions. How are you going to live like God wants you to? That's why it's so important to keep on reading. In other words, you know, you get, I'm sure I'm satisfied that every one of us here have eaten mashed potatoes and fried chicken more than once. Yeah. There's the mashed potatoes and fried chicken of, of, of God sends us. We read it through more than once. Read it through over and over and over again. Feed on that word. It's so very important to us. Remember what the scripture says, there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. God tells us that his word is to be hid within our heart, that we might not sin against him. Did you catch that? A word of a hit in my mouth that I might not sin against him. If, if we're not hiding God's word in our heart, we're going to sin against him in other words. But we hide his word in our heart so that we won't sin against him. And we read it over and over and over again in order to hide it within our heart. It's so important that we look at what God says. When we don't obey him, we're facing tragic results. He says, the end it's a way of death when we choose our own way, when we follow Satan's way. An American society has chosen to reject Christianity. American society has chosen to do things their own way. American society has chosen to live by sin. Having that attitude of, if it feels good, do it. But there's a way that seems right to man and, and that's what God's talking about. There's a way that seems right to man but it's end is a way of death. If it feels good to you but it's wrong according to Scripture, it's got a terrible ending. Jesus Christ came and committed His life to forgive and to save People of every race, people of every nationality, rich people, poor people, uneducated people, well-educated people, people from all kinds of societies. He came to shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sin. He came willing to save and willing to forgive and he came loving and caring about all people. Jesus Christ came 
with the purpose of being beat nearly to death, shedding his blood on the cross of Calvary, dying for us, that we would have the opportunity to be saved. He knew there was no other way for salvation except that he would do what he did. He came willingly going to that cross. He chose to go to that cross. He suffered and he bled and he died for all who would believe upon him. And he's willing to forgive and save everyone who trusts him. Everyone who believes upon him. You know, Jesus Christ came showing us the way to heaven. Before he went to that cross, he taught us. Look over to John 3. John chapter 3. Jesus taught us how to become a Christian. He taught us the way that we're to be united with God. The way that we are to Prepare for heaven. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And he that believeth on Him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See, that's how we begin to choose to do the right things. How we begin to choose to do the things that God wants us to instead of the things that seem right to us is that we believe on Jesus as Lord and Savior. God loves us, every one of us. There's nobody in this world that God doesn't love. He loves the worst terrorists. He loves the most terrible of all people. Jesus shed his blood for them too. Jesus said that whosoever believeth on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't narrow it down to a certain nationality. He didn't narrow it down to how good a person is. He didn't narrow it down to the, to the wealth or education of a person. But whosoever believeth on him would not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world. No, he didn't do that. He sent Jesus that the world through him might be saved. And Jesus clearly says, He who believes on him is not condemned. That's the only way to have that condemnation lifted is to believe on Jesus. But he said, he who does not believe is condemned already. In other words, you don't have to wait till you get, till you die to be condemned. You're condemned already, Jesus said, if you haven't believed. And why is that? Because You've not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Think about your friends, your family members, people you associate with. How many of them are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? We have a responsibility to bear witness of the gospel of Christ to them, to share the gospel with them, to minister to them. We have a responsibility to Help them to understand their need for Jesus that they can also understand their need not to do the ways that seem right to them, but to do the things that are right according to the living God. You know, I praise God for what He's done for us. He, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And He gave to people the dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over everything that creeps upon the face of the earth. 
How are we doing with that? As individuals, we need to live in obedience to Him and serve, serve Him and we need to obey Him in all ways. I urge you to trust God completely and do things His way instead of your way or instead of Satan's way. Trust. There's a way that seems right to a man, but its sin is the way of death. I wonder this morning, are you sure you're on your way to heaven? If you've never believed on Jesus as Lord and Savior, I encourage you, I urge you to believe on Jesus this morning. He'll forgive you. He'll save you. As Christians this morning, if you've been choosing your way to live, I urge you to repent. To study the Word and find out God's way. And live God's way. Trust Him completely. Let Him control your life. Father in heaven, as we sing an invitation hymn, I pray, Lord, that you'll help each of us to respond positively to you. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll help us to listen to you and to your word. I pray that you help each of us to understand that believing on Jesus as Lord and Savior is the only way to get to heaven. Help us to understand that ways that seem right to us but are in opposition to you have a deadly end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.